everybody, Jay Wade back here with another No Pause Reaction. Thank you all so much for joining me. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Uh, and if you've not already done so, please hit the subscribe button. I think I just snorted like a pig. I'm not sure if you heard it. Then I called myself out, and, and, and it's all good. If you didn't hear it, I still called myself out, and we're still all good. But hey, at least I'm honest, and I'm not easily embarrassed, baby. Uh, we're going to do one here. I love, uh, dude, I love Andrew Scholes. He is so freaking funny. His crowd work especially is just hysterical um jordan Pe uh peterson dr jordan b peterson he is uh just an amazing compassionate and intellectual human being uh who who needs to be preserved and and kept safe at all costs um but we're gonna do one here of them having an act or having a, a conversation there isn't anything that makes you more powerful than being literate and articulate uh articulate i could probably do better do better in that myself but uh hit subscribe if uh, if you've not already done so let's get up to 3k i think we can do it by the end of the month and then 5k by the end of the year that would be sweet okay everybody let's do it to it i talked to jocko willink recently too and, and he's mm. I, you know do you know of jocko of course yeah the black and white okay, instagram okay. love okay. it and yeah man most people he, he's a military type a, uh, yeah. a former navy seal a yeah. tough tough guy like wakes up early way man What's that? Wakes up early. Yeah, and, right. And wants you to know and about harasses it. Harasses people yeah. for not doing it yeah, in, a, in a friendly way. And, you know, he also went on a very inspired rant about the utility of his English literature degree because it made him so formidable in communication within yeah. the military structure. It's like, yeah. I can't understand how that idea has been forgotten or why it isn't being transmitted properly. It's like there's nothing you can possibly do to become more deadly than to improve your facility with language and the way you do that is by reading especially great oh, things shows has writing, something to say. by thinking and by speaking for that matter but how how could that not be viewed as absolutely central to what education is about you want to be inarticulate and stumble over everything that you try to think <laughs> and communicate yeah. yeah how are you going to get anywhere you don't even know who you are under those circumstances you're yeah. this massive feeling <laughs> that's expressing itself, you know, maybe in violence because you can't find the words and yeah. Yeah. You, you stumble around and bump into things and you're clunky and dull and you're yeah. not witty, you don't sparkle and you're not going to get laid. Yeah. And so, <laughs> not unless someone feels sorry for you. And, you know, that's probably not a great motivation. Yeah. Well, prostitution is oh, legal shit. in New York now. So. Oh my gosh. There are well, there, there's always it. that. Yes. There's always yes. that. hundred percent. And I, there's pornography, you know, where you don't have to speak at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess I guess I wonder if it's like um it's too I have I should tell your the people who are listening. I have a list on my website of great books. There's like a hundred. I, I swear to God, I thought you were about to say I have a list of great pornography. Oh <laughs> go. Go go with the I books. I keep up. that list private. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I have a list of funny. books on my website, and yeah. I put that there because these are books that had a major impact on me, both as a scientific thinker, but also as a philosophical or a psychological thinker. Yeah. And so, I'd encourage people if you want to facilitate, if you want to develop your capacity to articulate yourself and gain all the advantages that that brings along with it, which are immense in every possible sphere of life, you could go read those books. And you won't come out of that knowing everything, but you'll come out of it knowing a lot more than you did when you went in. And then you're deadly, regardless of what you do. Do you, do you think that um, a liberal arts education or humanities education is too derivative from making money? No, 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 no. Not uh, when it's proper, not at all. Exactly. And the no. evidence suggests that it's not. Look, in the, here's the, in the eyes of, of the that. public. I'm saying in the eyes of the public. It, in yeah, fact, but, but you can But look, can't. look what rich people do with their kids historically. They send them to get a liberal arts education. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you think it's because they're stupid? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not why they did that. They know that there isn't anything that makes you more powerful than being literate and articulate. Yeah. And so you might say, well, you didn't get trained in anything specific. And maybe you need to buttress your liberal arts degree with training in something specific. Mm. But being able to communicate, especially as you rise up the ranks in any organization, yeah. there isn't anything that serves you better than your ability to communicate. I mean, you read to learn. You communicate to negotiate, to plan, mm -hmm. to strategize, to encourage other people, to bring them on board, to put put them on your side. It's like so if you're 
if you have finesse with language, nothing can possibly stand in your way. And that's how it should so be taught true. to young, especially young men, but not only young men, but especially young men. It's like, you want to get somewhere, mm. like learn to speak. Yeah. Yeah, 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 in its most basic sense. If you want to get somewhere, learn how to speak. There's a, uh, my, my fiance, when she was younger, her stepfather would, uh, would do this thing with her where she, uh, he would make her go start conversations with people. She was like nine years old or something, like a young kid. But yep. just go up to people, start conversations, and don't ask yes or no questions. Hmm. Hmm. I, I cannot tell... She is wow. so much more comfortable around people. Like I'm pretty comfortable around people. I literally talk to them for a living. Like I perform in front of groups of people. For someone who doesn't perform, who's not in entertainment, her ability to just walk up to a stranger and her confidence in being able to spark a conversation, right? And I'm not just talking to like a guy. Of course, a guy is gonna talk to a beautiful girl. It could be a girl. Her or ability. not, because he might be intimidated right into inarticulateness, right? You're right, 100%. And she, that isn't yeah, a word, yeah, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> he might be rendered inarticulate by her beauty. And that'd be especially the case if he's not confident in his ability to speak. 100%. So it's like, yeah, I wonder how much of that, like, I, I keep trying to, like, as well, I, as I get older. When my kids you know, were little, I had each of them, because I used to go to performances at their school, dramatic performances. And the kids would be up on stage playing out a part at, at some concert. And I'd be like five rows back and I couldn't even hear them. And it just yeah. used to drive me <laughs> mad. I think, good God, why couldn't the teacher take that child and like spend 10 minutes getting them to yell out their lines right, so that right. people could hear them. Yeah. I took my kids at home and I had them stand up and said, well, you tell me what happened during your day. I want you to talk about your day for five minutes right louder louder belt it out so i can hear it yeah you know put your hands down stand up deliver the damn lines you know did that <laughs> shroom with mud water and change your life i'm on shrooms don't tell my mom mushrooms mushrooms, mushrooms. Well, we did that a few <laughs> times and they got it right away yeah. And how useful, what a useful skill that is to be able to stand up and at least speak loudly enough so that people can hear you. When you're doing your comedy performances, where do you put your voice? You whisper so no one can hear you. Well, some, I mean, you want people to hear you, obviously, but sometimes you can use low volume to bring people in. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. That's when you're doing it on purpose. Yes, yes, but right. not you can not play with the volume and the delivery. Yes, yes. Yeah. But yeah, a hundred percent. Like I don't know. I, I think about all this stuff with like this is a good conversation. As I get older, and I'm gonna want to start a family, and like, you know, even the things that I got from my parents to develop confidence. Like, I now that I look back on it, we would just have. We were so, very, so fortunate. Like we had dinner together every single night, and it was literally the stage for me. They would just ask me how my day was and I could go on. And I thought that what I said was valuable. It was probably mm. stupid. Oh, that's definitely a gift, man. That's definitely a gift. And I think your observation about the table as a stage is a really good one. A tremendous amount of socialization takes place around the table. Yeah. And people learn to communicate or not there because it yeah. is a stage and we share yeah. food. It's a very peculiar human trait. It's very deep. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so interesting. Like, I don't know. And you were encouraged apparently. Yes, they, they, they pushed me and, and, you know, both of them were, were dreamers. So that was maybe a unique situation mm. as well. But but I'm just curious about that, especially now. as well, I What older. did your parents think about your ability? You said you were encouraged. So, you know, my father particularly, but also my mother, but particularly my father, you know, he he had confidence in me. He yes. was he was strict and and he but, had very yeah. high standards, but he also had confidence in me. So I always knew that. How as, did you as know that to many of my friends who didn't have that? How did you know that he had confidence in you? Good question. How did he express Very that? Good I question. think probably because he spent a lot of time with me when I was a little kid, mm. helping me like he taught me how to read. He spent a lot of time with mm. me, teaching me things that were useful. Mm. So nice. I knew that he valued my attention, my time. I yep. guess that was a big part of it. Yeah. And I suppose it was also partly, perhaps partly, the fact that he would be disappointed if I didn't do something well. You know, yeah, which yeah, you yeah, think, yeah. well, you don't want to disappoint which your father. It's a like, good well, thing to a, a degree. Maybe you do. Maybe you want to disappoint your father when you do something not so good. I mean, are you going to be pleased if he's pleased when you do something bad? Wow. I don't think so. Wow. Okay, guys. Wow. Man, that was a great little clip out there. Holy crap. 
I want to watch the rest of that. Check that out, guys. Uh, if you're interested, go check out the rest of that one. Um, I will see if I can get the uh, the uh, the link in the description for the full full episode. I don't know uh, if it if it uh, looks like it's only on da Daily Wire Plus, but we'll see. Uh, hey, man, I I love both of those guys for different reasons. One is hysterically funny, and the other one is amazingly uh, intellectual and compassionate. Uh, I just I I love it so much. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about that conversation. That was an extremely interesting conversation. Um, I would love to see Scholl's uh, uh, talk with with more people on uh, Jordan Peterson's level as far as uh, intellectuals and and uh, just that kind of stuff, man. That because Scholl's has a has a great perspective, great point of view. That's a great pairing right there. I think Jordan and Andrew. Uh, but yeah, man, I loved it. I loved it. If you, if you liked this hit, like hit subscribe. If you've not already done so, thank y'all so much for the support, everybody. And until next time, have a great and safe night.